Start the lesson by viewing the finished animated zoo kiosk. You'll create the kiosk by adding sound and video files to a project in Animate and an Air for Desktop document. Double click the Shearwood Wildlife Preserve .air, a cross platform installer in the Lesson 10 10 end folder to install the project. The installer warns you that the application comes from an unknown author. But you can trust us. Click Install. Good day. My name is Paul Smith. I'm the Zoo. When the installation is done, the application launches a new window at the upper left corner of your desktop. After a brief soundtrack of an African beat, a zoo director pops up and introduces himself. Click a sound button in the lower left to hear an animal sound. <coughs> Click one of the buttons bearing the picture or name of an animal to view a short movie about the animal. Use the interface controls below the movie to pause the movie, continue, or lower the volume. Press Command Q or Control Q to close the application. You can also choose Quit from the Mac OS dock or from the Windows taskbar. Go into the 10 Start folder and double click the 10 Start.fla file to open the initial project in Animate. Choose File, Save As, and name it 10 underscore working copy. FLA and click Save. Saving a working copy ensures the original start file will be available if you want to start over. You'll import several sound files to the library panel, which you'll use throughout this lesson. Choose File, Import, Import to Library. Enter the Sounds folder in the 10 Start folder, and make sure that you have all files selected in the Type dropdown in order to see the various sound files. Select the monkey.wav file and click Open. The monkey wave file appears in your library panel. The sound is indicated by a unique icon and when it is selected, the preview window shows a waveform, a series of peaks and valleys that represent the sound. Click the play button in the upper right corner of the library preview window. The sound plays. Double click the sound icon to the left of the monkey wave file. The sound properties dialog box appears, providing information on your sound file, including its original location size, and other technical properties. Click OK to close the dialog. Choose File, Import, Import to Library, and select the other sound files to import into your Animate project. Import Elephant Wave, Lion Wave, African Beat MP3, and Afro Latin Beat MP3. Click Open to import the files. Now create a new folder in your library and name the folder Sounds. Place all of the sound files into the Sounds folder in order to organize them. You'll place a sound on the very first keyframe that plays at the start of the movie to provide a pleasant audio introduction and set the mood. Select the Videos layer on the timeline and insert a new layer. Rename it Sounds. Select the first keyframe of the Sounds layer. Drag the Afro Latin Beat MP3 file from the Sounds folder on your library panel to the stage. The waveform of your sound appears on the timeline. Select the first keyframe of the sounds layer. 
if it's not already selected, and in the Properties panel, in the Sound section, note that your sound file is now listed in the Name menu. Choose Stream from the Sync menu. The Sync options determine how the sound plays on the timeline. Use Stream Sync for long passages of music or narration when you want to synchronize the sound with the timeline. Move the playhead back and forth along the timeline. The sound plays as you scrub. Choose Control, Test. The sound doesn't play. Because the sound is set to stream, it plays only when the playhead moves, and only if there are sufficient frames to play. A stop action at frame 1 pauses the playhead to wait for the user to click a button, and thus stops the sound. Let's close that, and going back to the timeline, select the first keyframe of the sounds layer, and in the properties panel, change the sync option from stream to event. When the event sync option is selected, the sound plays as soon as the playhead enters the keyframe that the sound is in. Testing your movie to hear the full sound play. The sound clip you imported is a bit longer than you need. You'll shorten the sound file by using the Edit Envelope dialog box. Select the first keyframe of the sound layer, and in the Properties panel, in the Sound section, click the Edit Sound Envelope button. As you can see, this is to the right of the Effect menu and bears the icon of a pencil on a speaker. The Edit Envelope dialog box appears. The upper and lower waveforms represent the left and right channels of the stereo sound, respectively. The thin black line running horizontally above each waveform shows the volume level for each channel, and together they make up the envelope of the sound. A timeline runs between the waveforms. The effect menu in the upper left corner offers preset effects, and the buttons enable view options occupy the lower right corner. In the edit Envelope dialog box, click the Seconds button if it isn't already chosen. The timeline changes to show seconds instead of frames. Click the Frames button to switch back. You can switch back and forth depending upon how you want to view your sound. Click Zoom Out until you can see the entire waveform. The waveform appears to end around 240 frames or about 10 seconds. Drag the right end of the time slider to the left to about frame 50. The sound shortens by being clipped from the end. The sound now plays for about 50 frames. Click OK to accept the changes you've made. The Edit Envelope dialog box closes. Choose Control Test or click the Test Movie button. The sound plays for only 50 frames, which is a little over 2 seconds, and then stops abruptly. Close the Test Movie Preview window.